Hey, welcome back to another episode of Camp and Camera. Today, we're going to finish up building the doors. Hey, welcome back everyone. This is going to be the last build video in the door build series. Um, so far, we cut the door core out, sheeted it with plywood on the inside and outside, bent the exterior trim for the door, and put hinges on it before we did a trial fit in the last video uh, to make sure that it would open and close okay. Today, we need to disassemble the door so that we can put the aluminum sheeting on the outside and put trim pro caulk around the uh, the trim that goes on the exterior of the door that will button it all back up before we put the window in so now we may come back and do a comprehensive uh, video that covers everything nose to tail on the door build that way it's all in one little spot you know just cover the highlights but let's get started on this last one last time I cut uh, a couple door shims out from some UHMW, or some people call it super slick plastic, um, and I milled it down just on a belt sander to about a quarter of an inch thick, and these spacers go in behind the hinges. I don't know how well you saw those on the, um, the last episode, so I just want to give you a closer look, but for my installation, they're about a quarter inch thick, and they just sandwich right in behind, and what I'm going to do is take some of this, um, I'm going to call it D rubber trim has a self-adhesive backing on it and I'll just be putting this on the back side of the T-molding and when the door closes it's this rubber seal that will close against the short leg of the L trim on the sidewall of the camper so here's a little bit better look at the profile of this D trim now the D trim if you you know want to buy D trim put on your camper the thickness of the trim certainly will be dictated by the space between your you know, your door molding and your uh, wall molding. This is the aluminum skin that goes on the outside of the door and obviously it's the same skin that goes on the whole outside of the camper. Um, right now it has the plastic film on it that protects it from getting scratched. What I'll probably do is just peel the plastic back, I don't know, maybe a couple inches all the way around and then I'll start putting the aluminum trim back down. Um, I'm just going to trial fit the aluminum trim to make sure that everything fits okay and if it does then I'll pop the trim up put down some trim pro caulk and then screw it in place the thing that I'm really wanting to make sure of is you know I'm adding about 40 thousandths thickness um, between the T trim and the door and I want to make sure that the screw holes still line up uh, they should be okay if it's only a 40 thousandths offset. It should pull itself together, but I want to make sure before I put the caulk down. Okay, exactly what I thought could happen and probably would happen did happen. Um, where the holes are offset 40 thousandths now for the T-trim because the the added thickness of the skin. I knew that the trim, um, you know, it would have to, to, to be pulled down a little bit by the screw. And when it did, it actually tilted the trim a little bit. It tilted the outer portion of the T-trim downward and inward just a little bit. And that's okay because I have about a quarter of an inch, uh, 3 sixteenths, maybe a quarter of an inch gap between the T trim on the door and the L trim on the wall of the camper. So all this is gonna do is just pull that or angle that um, T trim slightly. So instead of being horizontal or parallel with a face, it'll be tilted down this way a little bit. Not that much, but just kind of showing you. So all it will do is just barely close that gap a little bit 
and just compress the seal a bit more. So that should work out absolutely well. first thing I'm going to do is spread some, it's called roof and flashing polyurethane sealant. Uh, the kind I'm using is from Loctite, it's PL or Proline, and I like to use Trim Pro 635 on as much as I can, but the Trim Pro is pretty expensive and it takes a while for me to get. It's not available local, I have to order it. And this I can pick up at uh, Lowe's. So I'm just going to put this on the outside of the door, around the perimeter, and then around the perimeter of the window. And that's just basically going to be to uh, to make a seal around the perimeter in case the aluminum trim were to leak. Um, maybe that would keep the water from you know going on down into the wood. So we'll just put that on right fast. All right, I'm gonna start putting the first piece of trim on. Uh, this is some L trim that will be on the bottom or the inside of the door. I'm just gonna take some Trim Pro caulk, which I've preheated by putting it in front of a space heater just to get it uh, the viscosity down and get it flowing a little better. Now I'm just going to take some odorless mineral spirits. Um, I was going to see, I think it's oil based. Yeah, oil based, uh, for it's for mineral spirits for oil based paint. Um, anyway, I'm going to take some of this and wipe off the excess Trim Pro caulk. This is a messy, messy job. That's the only part that I don't really like about putting the trim on. Is it just so messy? But it's a it's a necessary evil, so you got to do it. All right, we've got the uh, top piece of trim on. Now it's time for the really hard one. This one. Um, this one essentially wraps around three sides. So this one's really going to be uh, a bear to have to deal with. It's going to be really messy, and uh, but that's just part of it. So I'm just going to put this on a time lapse and just let you see uh, see it go together. Now that I have the aluminum trim installed around the perimeter, um, I just removed the protective plastic film off of the aluminum skin. And I'm gonna flip the door over and temporarily install the window. After making sure that I have a constant um, gap between the window and the door frame, now I'm gonna put the trim ring on. And what I'm gonna do, there's actually, um, 
a little groove around the edge of the window <coughs> that lines up with the holes pre-drilled in this trim ring. And what I'm going to do is loosely lay this trim ring down and make sure that the holes line up with that all the way around before I start drilling or putting screws into the trim ring. And yeah, that looks good. Ideally, <clears throat> I would have some machine screws with a, um, uh, I don't know what you call them, I'm going to call them a shoulder head, um, that you would not have to use with a washer. I don't have any of those at the moment. I can go back and buy those and replace these screws with it. But these are what I have. I'm just going to put this in here with a washer and see how it fits. So the temporary install is going pretty well. Um, it's going so well, in fact, that I'm not gonna go ahead and put all the screws around the perimeter. I'm just gonna wait until I get the permanent screws. Um, these silver screws happen to, you know, use those of the washer. It doesn't look very good. Again, that was just a temporary measure. I'm gonna pick up the right screws and just install this thing once and for all. And, uh, but yeah, it's working well, working very well. I'm very pleased with it. All right, we are back in the shop. Uh, had to go to work today, but I stopped by Lowe's on the way home, and I picked up some number eight, um, just Phillips head, cap head screws. Um, they're about five eighths of an inch long. But the big thing is that the screws are black, so I'll be replacing these silver screws in the trim ring for the window with these. That way, they won't you know stick out. And I also picked up some 10 by 24 by i think they're 7 16 long t-nuts and i'm just driving those into the wood on the inside of the door um, so that i can put some stainless countersink machine screws through the chrome hinges on the other side so while i've got the window laid out i'm going to go ahead and uh, put both those kinds of screws in Okay, I've taken the window back out of the door and now I'm going to put down some butyl tape around the perimeter. Alright, the butyl tape is on. I'm just checking it all the way around, making sure that it is firmly seated, especially on the top edge into the frame. I sure don't want any leaks on this fella. It's all right. So now, let me make sure my door opening is the same distance of seven inches there, seven inches there, so my door opening is flush. There is six and three sixteenths six and three sixteenths. So I know that my door is parallel with the bottom and parallel with the front. So now I can just give it a little bit of a push, not real hard. Just want to seat the butyl tape so it'll stay in place when I turn it over. Oh, it's getting heavy.
and it does appear that the uh, butyl tape has a really nice seat <coughs> on the top and sides and on the bottom so looks like the window is in Okay, with that final snug of the uh, hinge screws, I believe the door is installed. Um, I have a frameless window, and I checked the butyl tape seal around the window. It looks really nice and snug, so I think it's going to be, uh, be waterproof. This frameless window I went with cranks out. There's a little crank on the bottom of the window, and the reason I went with that is I want to be able to leave it open a little bit for airflow even when it's raining outside so by being hinged at the top um, I, you know and I'm gonna have it probably have a drip cap over the top I think I'll be able to leave it open when it's raining and uh, we'll see but I really like the looks of a frameless window now the only thing I haven't done yet in the door build series is build and install the hinge and I'm probably going to do that in a separate video. And the reason I say that is I have it in my mind that I want to build my own door latch. Um, I'm not going to use one of the um, cabinet locks that a lot of folks use in the teardrops. Nothing wrong with those. And I almost did buy cabinet locks. Um, but I wanted to do something just a little bit different. I wanted something that, um, you know, locks from the inside, locks from the outside. It's real simple and most of all cost effective so be looking out for that future video and uh, hey I appreciate you watching the door build video series and I look forward to making more videos on the build of the camp easy hey this is New Year's Eve I hope you've had a great 2018 and really looking forward to a good 2019 so happy New Year's to all of you and uh, we'll see you down the road